we will be looking at the lesson format. Each lesson is designed to be taught as a 60 minute lesson. Therefore, if your class is 30 minutes or 45 minutes, you may not be able to finish it in one class. That would really depend on the skills of your student. If you'll remember from the previous video, the writing process, the introduction, may be abbreviated if the student is a transitional student. The grammar in this lesson is mainly a review. There will still be some new material, so look over each lesson and highlight that during the instruction. When you get to the lessons in the forms of writing, that will start with the descriptive writing. You will be teaching specific writing assignments based on the writing point that we're working on, whether it's descriptive writing or expository writing. And in those writings, they'll have graphic organizers for that specific subject that you'll be teaching. So we want to focus on those graphic organizers. Now the uh, forms of writing the grammar part of each lesson will complement the main lesson. That means if you're learning to do descriptive writing, then you'll probably have grammar exercises on something like adjectives or adverbs, something that would add to describing. Or if you're working on narrative writing and you have lots of dialogue, then you may have grammar exercises that reflect uh, the punctuation of dialogue in that section. Well, let's look at a sample lesson. This is an actual lesson out of Write Source G3. It's lesson 24 and it starts the persuasive writing section. Now at this point in time, your student will have homework. And so you want to check their homework at the beginning of class. If it was a writing assignment in the previous class, like maybe they were doing an assessment based on a writing prompt, then go back and check for all the key elements. Make sure that they included what the prompt was asking for. Make sure that the content that's in there is in agreement with what you were working on in your grammar points and help them to be able to see what needs to be corrected. Now, you wanna give specific commendation because the encouragement that you give that student for the skills that they are mastering is going to help them to keep a positive attitude and to look forward to their continued growth in writing. But you do wanna give them an area that they can improve on. So not only give them one specific area to work on, but also list an example of what you're talking about so that they know what they wanna, what you expect out of them to improve in that area. Now, occasionally you may have assigned grammar exercises instead of a writing assignment. And if you have something like that, you're just checking for understanding. So it won't take as long to do the grammar exercise uh, homework review as it would the writing assignment homework. Now I can't focus enough in this section that the homework review is so important. It may take three fourths of the class to go over the homework adequately for some writing lessons. And that's okay, because you're gonna be going back over all of the key points that that student learned for the previous assignment, including the grammar. And this is where they get to see, can I apply what I'm learning? So this section, if you take a little bit longer going over the homework, that's okay, because this is what we need to focus on with our children. In the writing instruction over here to the right, when you're ready to start covering the next lesson, this section at the beginning has some vocabulary that they want the student to be familiar with and to use. And so you may have your students that already know all this vocabulary, but if they don't, of course, you'd wanna teach it. On the next page, we're given an idea for how to start teaching this lesson. These lesson plans do not have to be covered verbatim. That means you don't have to read this section and do exactly everything it's saying in this part of the lesson. Instead, it's more like an outline. You want your students to understand why they are learning this point. How does it relate to them in their writing and in their life overall? For example, you're going to be working on a persuasive paragraph. Did your student know that they use persuasive speaking probably on a regular basis? They had an excellent idea here that you could use a, either this one or one that you come up with on your own. You can say, did you know that when you finish your homework and you tell your parents, I finished my homework, can we go to the park? That that is similar to writing a persuasive paragraph. 
apply it to something in their life and it'll be able to stick with them when to use it and how to use it. Now, again, we don't need to read this verbatim, word for word, have the student read it. If they read it ahead of time before class, that's wonderful. If they don't, this is more of an outline for you to teach it as you go through this. It's very important when they have something like this with the paragraph parts. Sometimes it'll be essays and you'll be going over the parts of a, the essay, what you'll have in the introductory paragraph or what you'll have in the middle paragraphs. Um, make sure you teach this point. Read this point with the students or have them read it to you. They need to know what's in the topic sentence because from writing to writing style, it's going to change. Persuasive paragraph, your topic sentence is completely different than if you're introducing a, a subject that you're going to describe in a descriptive paragraph. Same thing with the body sentences. In a persuasive paragraph, you're given reasons for why someone ought to see things from your opinion. Whereas in a descriptive paragraph or a narrative, you have a completely different purpose. And the closing sentence in a persuasive paragraph, you're giving a call to action. You don't do that in the other forms of writing. So it's real important for them to go over this. And then on the next page, they're going to get to see a model. They're going to get to see something that they can look back to later and be able to help them write their own. Especially if they get stuck on a point and they don't know how to be able to uh, transition from the, say, the topic sentence to the body sentences or the body sentence to a conclusion. So have them read this. This you do want them to read in the lesson and then identify each of these parts with your your student now when you get over to the instructional part of how to do what you just looked at what you just read we're going to follow the writing process you're going to go through the pre-writing you're going to do the writing the revising the edi editing and then the publishing so in the pre-writing help them to see that process and reinforce that process they have to come up with an idea sometimes you'll have idea charts or other graphic organizers to help them do that. Sometimes they'll give you something that can spark maybe creativity in the student. So these are great aids when you're preparing the lesson to teach to the student. Here we actually have a blank graphic organizer. Maybe the, the child is not interested, the student is not interested in the topics from the previous example. You can come up with your own. You don't have to necessarily write exactly what the book t is writing, but you want to follow the same format. You want it to be a persuasive paragraph, but it could be over a different topic. And you can fill this out with the student in the class and then take a screenshot and paste it into their uh, class in main page of uh, chat. Or you can assign it as homework, depending on how you teach this lesson. Then over here on the right, you start writing. It gives you ideas, first, what you need to do. It reviews that with you. Sometimes, it, if it's an essay, it'll tell you how to write the, or examples of things you can do for the beginning paragraph. And so in this section, they actually give a aid to help with writing the topic sentence because you're working on a paragraph. And so if your student is having trouble coming up with an idea, you can use this to get them started. On the next page, after they're done writing, and you can do some of this in class or assign it as homework, then you want to make sure the student knows what you're going to revise. What are you going to look for? For ex example, when you're writing a per persuasive writing, you're going to have an opinion. The student needs to know the difference between a fact, which you will have in your body, and opinion that you have as your topic. And there's an exercise that goes with it to help teach that. For instance, a fact is something that is true or can be proven, whereas an opinion is just a feeling or how someone feels about something. So I like to, especially if you've been doing a lot of talking, you can get into monologuing. Or if the student is starting to get a little antsy because this is an hour course and they're getting tired of sitting still, you can introduce a game at this point. Anytime you have something that has exercises, especially numbers, in class and in our teaching box, we have a dice or a die. And you can roll that die, have the kid click on it and roll that die. And if they roll a five, give them number five. Billy's favorite food is pizza. Is that a fact or an opinion? You turn it into a game. 
So that's one way that you can break up the lesson and keep it still flowing at the same time and get your kid focused back into the lesson. All right, in the next sh slide, we see that they've done the revising, now we wanna do the editing. There's a list here and you can refer the child back to the list so that they know what are we gonna be checking for with our grammar? What are we gonna look for? And you can encourage them to use that editing list before they turn in their homework to you and to check over their own work. There's also another grammar practice. So again, you can bring in the dice and you can use this as an exercise to break up some of the, the intensive writing section of it. When you get done with the writing section, you'll have a grammar point. The grammar point should work with the lesson. It should go hand in hand. Um, with adverbs, they explain more. They help the student to be able to make more specific sentences and to be able to clearly communicate what it is that they're trying to convince their reader of. So learning about the different types of adverbs and how they're used is an important part for their persuasive writing. Teach just as much as you need for the student to get the point. If you've got three exercises over here and they already know the point, you don't have to do them. If they're having a little trouble and you want to make sure that they know what it is, you don't have to do all of them. You can just do one or two of them. Or if the child needs it, then you can do all of them. This next slide shows us why this is important. Why do I need to learn this? Why does the student need to learn this? You can use adverbs to make your writing more specific and they'll make your sentences clearer and more interesting to read. They need to understand that. Show them how it works in this section. Maggie trapped the frog under the pill. Well, did she trap it because she was afraid of it? And she was scared? Or how did she feel? It doesn't really let us know. Well, if we read the second sentence, Maggie calmly trapped the frog under the pill. She's not afraid. She's not scared. Or maybe another word like this, Maggie carefully Calmly and carefully, they'll give you two different senses on that, but still, Maggie's not afraid. And be sure you highlight the tip. Sometimes the adverb can come before or after the verb. So here's another example. She spoke softly to her little prince. Well, now we know why she was calm and while she was careful. And so you can show them that you can say this, she calmly spoke or so, uh, softly spoke, and then she spoke softly. It works both directions. And as they're learning a new language, they need to be able to know that because formation of the structure of the words and the sentence is important to being able to communicate uh, efficiently. Now over here, these are more teaching aids. Same thing that we've been learning, but from another section of the book. And so if you need more instruction, over this point, you have more instruction to be able to use with the, the student. Also, maybe in a previous lesson, you went over manner or you went over place, but you didn't go over time. So maybe only focus on what you haven't taught yet. So sometimes that will happen. And again, don't forget the verb, I mean the tip with the adverbs here, teach that as well. Again, more exercise, bring in the dice if you need it. If the child already understands adverbs and you have you feel confident with that, then you don't have to do this lesson. Again, make sure that the student knows what they're doing for homework. Have them repeat it to you or explain it to you so that you know that they know what to do. Well, this is a general overview of how these lesson plans are set up and what the thinking was behind the way that they were set up. Writing point, grammar point that complements it and aids to help you be able to teach it. Try to make it interesting for the uh, student by learning what their likes and dislikes are, what their strengths are and the, the skills that they need to improve and help them to succeed in this. Thank you for your time and going over this video with us.